Welcome to a Legendarium special about the history behind George Orwell's Animal Farm. In this episode, we will study the historical context behind one of the English-speaking world's most beloved books. On August 17, 1945, just a few months after the death of Adolf Hitler, George Orwell published Animal Farm, a satire of the Russian Revolution and Soviet Union. This state emerged when the Communist Party seized control of the Russian Empire and promised to build a worker's paradise. Instead, they created the dictatorship of Joseph Stalin, who murdered 20 million Soviet citizens during nearly 30 years in power. Orwell himself was a fervent communist, but became disillusioned with the Soviet Union while fighting in the Spanish Civil War. Though he took a bullet in the throat while fighting Franco's fascists, Stalinists still chased him from the country. Later, Orwell became distressed at how fellow communists dismissed or defended Stalin's atrocities simply because he was a communist. Previously, Orwell wrote political tracts and contemporary journalism, but now he wrote a fairy story to explain the evils of Soviet communism. For inspiration, Orwell turned to a real place. During the war years, Orwell and his wife Eileen lived at a cottage in No. 2 Kitts Lane in the village of Wallington. In 1999, historian Brian Edwards named nearby Bury Farm as Orwell's inspiration for Animal Farm. Its barns, pond, hill, and orchard resemble those described in the book. While living in Wallington, Orwell saw a 10-year-old boy whipping a powerful cart horse. He then realized that men exploited animals as the rich exploited the poor. Orwell wrote the book over a period of three months during the winter of 1943 and 1944, then submitted Animal Farm to publishers. Some of the biggest names in British publishing rejected the book because it criticized Britain's wartime ally, the Soviet Union. Jonathan Cape, Ernest Hemingway's British publisher, accepted Animal Farm in 1944. However, Peter Smollett, head of the Russian section of the British Ministry of Information, urged Cape to drop it. Smollett would later be unmasked as a Soviet spy. Altogether, five reputable publishers refused the novel, many offended by the communists being portrayed as pigs. Finally, a small press led by Frederick Warburg took the novel and later published the best-selling 1984, also by Orwell. In 1946, a Soviet refugee led Red Animal Farm in Ukrainian to a captivated audience of refugees then living in West Germany. When the refugee asked Orwell to publish a Ukrainian translation, Orwell not only obliged but refused any royalties from the Ukrainian edition. He even wrote the refugees a letter praising them for standing up to Stalin. The letter would become the only published introduction for Animal Farm. In the literary world, Animal Farm touched some distinguished authors. C.S. Lewis, author of the Chronicles of Narnia, wrote, The great sentence, all animals are equal, but some are more equal than others, bites deeper than the whole of 1984. Margaret Atwood, the author of The Handmaid's Tale, read Animal Farm at age nine. Later she wrote, I was traumatized early in life by the death of that poor horse in Orwell's Animal Farm, which I thought was going to be like Peter Rabbit. In the book, the ruling pigs work the powerful cart horse boxer to exhaustion, rather than let him live out his days in a pasture, as they promised during the early days of the revolution, they sell him to a glue factory to fund the purchase of whiskey. Animal Farm also inspired the United States Central Intelligence Agency, which saw Animal Farm as anti-communist propaganda during the Cold War. From 1952 to 1957, the CIA launched balloons from West Germany to drop copies of Animal Farm into Soviet-ruled countries like Poland and Czechoslovakia. The CIA also funded the 1954 animated film. 
future Watergate conspirator E. Howard Hunt bought the rights to Animal Farm from Orwell's widow to make the film possible. Unsurprisingly, the Soviet Union banned Animal Farm for most of its existence. In 1988, as Mikhail Gorbachev's policy loosened state control in the Soviet Union, a journal called Rodnik published Animal Farm in four installments. A Soviet newspaper called Izvestia printed an excerpt later that year. In a sign of how free expression had grown during the Gorbachev years, a state journalist wrote, it is good that the prose of this great English writer reaches our readers, albeit late. Beyond the Soviet Union, the communist regime in Cuba organized bonfires for copies of Animal Farm, and North Korea banned the book outright. No surprise there. However, other regimes with no ties to communism understood the book's power. Both the United Arab Emirates and Malawi banned the book. In Malawi, the ruling party charged a former minister named Albert Muwalu with treason and hung him in 1977. During his trial, state prosecutors noted that Mulawu owned a copy of Animal Farm, then a banned book in Malawi. In 1991, the Kenyan government banned a Swahili language play based on Animal Farm rewritten to attack corruption. Orwell's masterpiece went on to find a spot in many school reading lists and top 100 lists published by Modern Library and Time magazine. Animal Farm had some unauthorized sequels as well. They include the 2002 work Snowball's Chance by John Reed, which imagines Snow Napoleon's rival Snowball returning to Animal Farm and founding capitalism. John Zagrodsky's 2007 book The Rats Are in the Cheese imagines a hedgehog leading a campaign for tax reform. In the realm of music, Pink Floyd produced a 1977 album called Animals, inspired by the book, with a cover featuring a flying pig. Ironically, they used the album to criticize capitalism rather than communism. In 2020, the band Coldplay made a music video called Piggies, which featured a homeless person reading a copy of Animal Farm while wearing a deer mask. Nearly a decade after the fall of the Soviet Union, the Hallmark Channel aired a 1999 adaptation of Animal Farm starring the voices of Patrick Stewart and Julia Louise Dreyfus. The film had mixed reviews in part because it removed Orwell's bleak ending in favor of a new human family taking over Animal Farm. This is treated as a happy ending, and it remained unclear if the new owners would be any different from Mr. Jones. For any disappointed by this adaptation, Robert Ick released a Broadway adaptation this year after successfully bringing 1984 to the stage. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.